And you already know what it is, Jay Williams, let's live life, and we're back. Watch the company you keep. You don't always know who this dude is that's kicking it with you, what he's really about, what he's got going on. You only know what he tells you or what you discover along the way. I have been tricked. Lord knows I've been tricked. I've had some dudes around me that I thought were like one thing and they turned out to be something completely different. And I always find out on my own. I never find out from them. I find out by doing what you're supposed to do while you're locked up. And that's paying attention to your surroundings. You're going to meet dudes that you think are solid. And when the moment comes for the get down or that has to be tested, they're going to fold. You're going to meet dudes that you think like women. And you're going to start to pick up on little things and figure out, all right, that's not the case with him. You meet a lot of different dudes and you are going to be tricked 100%. You might have somebody steal from you. The list goes on and on and on. But today we're going to get into being tricked, finding out who somebody is, the reality of the people you might end up around, and some of the stories that I've got to give y'all. As y'all can see, we're not in the Hummer. We're in the charge of the day, much quieter. A little weird being low to the ground like this. I have not had much sleep. Was up all night dealing with this damn tooth. We're going to get through it. We're going to get these videos back to where they should be. So anyway, finding out who somebody really is, being tricked and imprisoned by somebody you consider to be a friend. You know I done seen it. You know I done lived it. Now let's relive it. Almost everybody that goes to jail is going to make some type of friends, acquaintances, people that you talk to and kick it on a day-to-day -day basis. All those guys that say, man, I ain't really talked to nobody when I was locked up. I stayed to myself the whole time. You don't see a whole lot of that. You're going to find guys you can relate to that remind you of people you hung out with in the real world. Guys that stories are similar to yours, that dated similar chicks, like the same things, people you click with, somebody you could actually see yourself being homeboys with on the street. Sometimes friendships are made with some of the weirdest people. You become friends with somebody you would have never kicked it with on the street. You come to find out, even though we don't have much in common, I do. I don't know if I've spoken on Danny in the past. I'm pretty sure I have. But when I fell on this bid, this bid that sent me away for the decade, I meet Danny. When I get into jail, Danny's already been sentenced to prison. I ask him, I, you know, we get to playing cards. That's how we initially meet. It's through the tongue table and the spade table, poker. We play cards together and we build a little friendship, acquaintance, if you may. And he tells me, man, I've already been sentenced. I said, yeah, how'd you make out? He's like, man, I got six of them things. Meaning he got six years. We would kick it for a couple months, man. We'd meal up together, watch TV together, work out together, different things. Just my homeboy while I'm in jail, right? And most times you don't get out and reconnect with these dudes. You just, y'all kick it because you're both locked up. You're bored. It passes time. I take my first trip to the hole not long after I get into jail. So when I come out, Danny's already been shipped off to prison. And I go to a new pod. I'm not even, even if Danny had still been there, we wouldn't cross paths anymore because my trip to the whole placed me in a new, you know, a new pod, a new environment, new people. I sit in the jail for a long time. I go through my trial process, back and forth to court. Eventually I'm sentenced. Now I got to wait on Department of Corrections to come pick me up and take me off to prison, which is as crazy as it sounds. It's something guys look forward to. Once you know you're going to prison, it's not a scary feeling. It's like, please come and get me already. Get me out of here. Like, I want to go outside and get fresh air. I want more selections on commissary. You know, I want to be able to move, do this, do that, get a job. Like, actually have some sort of a life while you're incarcerated. It takes almost a year. 
I'm shipped off to prison. I told y'all about my first day I get there, some things transpire. Um, with these blood dudes, leads into all this other shit that would carry on for a while. I run into Danny. Man, what's up with you? Ain't nothing, man. I just got here. You, you, I, yeah, that's, that's what's up, man. How you been? I'm good, man. I'm bidding. I said, that's what's up. You want to smoke? Yeah, that's, you know, me and Danny, we walk the track, smoke. And I'm talking smoking cigarettes. Walk around smoking, chilling, kicking it. Danny's like, I'm going to try to get moved from my building over to your building. I said, shit, you got the power like that. Get over there. Danny makes it happen. He talks to the people, pulls some strings one way or another. He didn't do no telling. You could actually get moved from building to building if you stayed on the people's good side. Because all it is is them typing your name in the system and telling you pack your stuff up and go over to that building and to that cell, reassign you. Danny gets moved back and, you know, he's, he's in the pod with me. We're back to like we were in the jail. Kicking it every day. We do our workout. He's one of the first people I really got close to, you know, in the prison. Me and Danny kick it every day. Danny didn't have a TV. I ordered a TV. He'd come down to my cell. I had a headphone splitter. He'd put his, plug his headphones in, sit on the bunk. We'd watch TV shows, make our meals. If there was a problem, you had a problem with Danny, you had a problem with me. If you had a problem with me, you had a problem with Danny, right? I think this is my homeboy. Danny is a solid dude, right? He's gonna ride for me, he's gonna rock for me, this is my homeboy. I start noticing little things about Danny and I call him on it one day. I said, what's up, bro? You getting high? What you mean getting high? I was like, you look high, man. You look like, like you're high, like you're on some pills or some dope or something. He's like, nah, I be smoking a little bit of weed here. And then I'm like, well, damn, bro. We do everything together. Why you don't ever break the weed off? It's my Sully's weed, and I can't say nothing. I smoke with him. I said, all right, man, that's what it is. You know what I mean? I, I got to respect that, and you can't come telling me about what your Sully's doing. If I say something to Sully, he's going to be like, why the hell are you in my business, right? Yeah. We do our, our whole kicking routine, chilling, all this and that. I'm trying to get through this, man. My mouth is killing me, and I'm tired. We do our whole kicking routine, and this goes on for months and months and months, man. Probably... Up until about five, six months, Danny's my ace. Everywhere Danny goes, I'm there. Everywhere, you know, I go, Danny's there. I wake up one morning, Danny's gone. Go down to Danny's cell, Danny's cellmate tells me, Danny checked in in the middle of the night. I said, Danny checked Danny He was like, hell yeah, he checked in. He owes everybody. Oh, what do you mean he owes everybody? That's my dude, man. Like, he gets money from the streets. What do you mean he owes everybody? Man, Danny's been messing with that dope. He owes a lot of people money. He owes, His people were supposed to send people on the streets money. The money never showed up. And he just, in the middle of the night when they came through, told him he feared for his life. I looked over. He already had all his stuff packed. And they came back about 3, 30, 4 o'clock this morning. Took him up out of here and took him to the hole. So now I look stupid. Now it looks like my homeboy's a check-in artist. And you do not want to be known for checking in. Checking in is when you go to the guards and you voluntarily go to the hole because you fear for your life. People are putting pressure on you. You can't take what's going on around you. Nobody likes a check-in artist. That is by far top five worst titles you can have on your name in prison. If you've known for checking in, your credit, your word, none of that is any good. And I don't care if it's happened just one time, it'll follow you your whole bid. I said, damn, man. Huh? My homeboy's a check-in artist. Now I'm looking around at dudes that I've been in there with that have watched us kick it thinking, in my head, this dude has made me look bad. All these dudes are thinking, I rock with a dude that's scared. That's not the worst part of it, the perception and what other dudes think. I don't give a shit what you, what you think. Put your hands on me or say something to me, then we'll go from there. What y'all say amongst yourselves, I, I'm not concerned with it unless it makes it back to me, right? Shortly after breakfast, I have a dude come to my cell and says, Hey, what's up with your homeboy? I said, I know what he's talking about, but you know I'm going to play stupid. What you mean, what's up with him? What's up with your homeboy? He rolled out owing a bill. All right, well, I guess y'all got to catch up with him. Nah, that ain't how that works, homeboy. That's your homeboy. You got to cover that bill. We don't take no losses. You got to pay that. What you mean I got to pay that? I'm not paying... I don't, I don't know nothing about no business agreement. You ain't never gave me nothing. I ain't never asked you for nothing. 
Man, we don't even talk. I'm not paying you nothing. Dude tells me, oh, you're going to pay. It's a lot of people he owes. It ain't no way you can buck this. You got to pay. And he rolls out. I'm still trying to, hey, come here, man. No, 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 no. I'm not paying. Hey, come here. He ain't trying to hit nothing. I got to say, he leaves, walks off. Wouldn't be maybe 15, 20 minutes. Another dude comes to my cell. Hey, your homeboy checked in. You rock with him. That's your age. You kick it with dude every day. You know you got to pay that. What? By the time lunchtime rolls around, I'd have been approached by three different dudes, man. Three different dudes telling me that Danny owed them money for dope and checked in. And this is how prison works. You are your company. I tell you that. If you run with somebody, whatever they do, if you're connected to them, you're responsible as well. If my homeboy goes in somebody's cell and steals something, and me and him are walking the yard together and people find out and they run up on him, they're going to deal with both of us because they're expecting me to defend my homeboy because I rock with him. The same way if my homeboy runs up a debt and ends up not being able to pay it, they're going to expect me to pay that debt because I rock with him. I've told y'all so many times, it always ends bad. Now, at this point, I ain't got a whole lot of dudes I consider friends, man. A small group of dudes, and under normal circumstances, my city would back me. Richmond's a city, it's not a gang. And them Richmond boys at the time were going hard. If they knew you were from Richmond, you knew some of their people, or knew some of their people's people, or y'all knew somebody had somebody in common. If you ran into a beef that say necessarily you hadn't created 99% of the time Richmond's gonna stand behind you here's the problem the dudes he owes money are from Richmond so Richmond the other cats from Richmond that know me they're not gonna step up and get involved because this is a Richmond beef Danny's claiming Richmond he's from more the Chesterfield area which is a county outside of Richmond but he rocks with Richmond he claims Richmond Richmond dudes rock with him that's who he owes I argue with these three dudes and with the last dude we almost got the fighting right then and there the only reason we didn't get the fighting is because there was so much dope floating around in here at that moment that if me and any of these dudes get to fighting and they end up locked up they lose that money when they go to the hole there's no guarantee they're coming back out here they got all these different people that owe them for these drugs so the last thing you want is to have a big fight break off we all go to the hole now you've lost all your money, not just the money that Danny owes you. You know, something happened where we get locked down and the dope you have starts to go bad. You can't sell it. They come in shaking down and you got to get rid of it. So I've already got it made up in my mind. This is by lunchtime. I'm like, I know when it's just going to happen. Nobody's trying to fight me in here. We're all getting rah-rah heated, arguing back and forth over this money that I damn sure don't owe, that I'm not going to pay. You got to beat my ass. I'm going to have to beat your ass. I cannot pay you. If I pay you, I just showed everybody in here that somebody can just push up on me and say, hey, you owe some money that I don't owe and now I got to pay it. I'm not paying it. Win, lose, or draw. I'm not coming off nothing. That's Danny's debt. Danny's going to pay it. I don't care about nothing else but that. I'm not doing it. I've made it up on my mind. After lunch, we're going out on the yard and this is where it's going to happen. Ain't no cameras out there. Ain't no guards watching. That lazy bitch in the tower ain't paying no attention. I just know that after lunch when we go out there, this shit's going down. I talked to one of the few dudes I do rock with, and I tell him, I said, look, I got beef, man. So when we go outside today, I'm probably got to go over the corner and get to rumbling with these dudes. He was like, well, what you want me to do? How do I play into this? I said, just stay out of it, man. It's some shit Danny created. And dude didn't like Danny to begin with. This is my other homeboy. I said, so this is, man, I told you about chilling with dude. I said, look, man, I don't want to hear the I told you's. This is the chaos he's created by leaving, right? We're on standby to go outside. Stay call standby before wreck so you can get whatever you need. You can have it ready to go outside, whether it be a cup of water, a towel, put your running shoes on, your sweatpants, a white beater. Get ready to go outside. Because once they open that door, it's gonna stay open for five minutes. And after five minutes, they shut it, you've missed wreck. They call standby for wreck. I get my towel, get the little stuff I'm taking out, put on a pair of sweatpants, put on a pair of, you know, all white. I think I had new balances at the time. And I'm like, well, here we go. I'm gonna go outside and I already know I'm gonna get to fighting with these dudes. I looked over, they're talking amongst themselves. So I know they're plotting, I know what's going down. I said, all right, it is what it is. There's very few times that I've heard them say, 
locked down and I didn't know what was going on or wasn't aware of what was going on. But it's went on standby for, for wreck. They come over to intercom and they tell everybody, hey, y'all go ahead and lock down. We'll proceed with movement shortly. Everybody needs to lock back down. Man, what the fuck? We supposed to be going to wreck? Y'all messing with our wreck, man. Let us go outside. Dudes are snapping on them. Lock it down and y'all stay locked down the rest of the night. Let us do what we got to do and then it's over with. We all go in our cells. I'm thinking to myself, what the hell is going on? Why is, I'm thinking something may be happening in another building and they need the officers from our building to go over there. That's a common thing. I see guards coming in and they're putting on gloves and they're going to all these different cells and they're headed in my direction. I tell my cellmate, I say, hey, they get ready to shake down, man. If you ain't got nothing, if you got something here you ain't supposed to have, you ain't got long to hide it. They're making their way over this way now. I ain't got nothing. I keep everything bam, but I always, as a convict, you always act like the cops are watching you or that you know they're coming. That's how you keep from getting caught with stuff. If you're not using something and you got something you ain't supposed to have, have it put up because you never know when they're going to come. The guards raid your cell at any moment. You're caught red-handed with something looking stupid. Keep it put up. They come in my cell and they're searching. They're going through envelopes. They're going through mail. They're dumping baby powder out on the counter, looking through the canisters. And I'm like, yo, what are y'all looking for, man? Why are y'all in my cell? Like, don't worry about it. Let us do our job. And I'm looking over. And they've got the little, you know, the dope boys that Danny owes. They're searching their cells too. It's like three or four other cells. They end up taking three of those dudes out of there. The same three dudes I had beef with, they end up taking out of there. I'm looking now like, yo, what? Like, I'm nervous now. Like, I hope dudes don't think I told on these dudes. You know what I mean? Like, I got beef with all three of the dudes that just got taken out of here. This ain't a good look. It's not. The only thing good about certain types of officers, the ones that play street, is they'll tell you little bits and pieces of things. You got some officers that play both sides of the fence. They'll be a correctional officer, like super correctional officer around other officers, but then when they get around the inmates, they play cool again. They don't find nothing in my cell. They lock these three dudes up. They actually locked the fourth dude up for something they found in his cell. They roll out with him, take him to the hole, right? We'll go out in the yard, and I'm walking with my other homeboy now, and he's like, this ain't a good look, man. I said, nah, it's not a good look, man. I said, yo, I don't know what the hell is going on. Like, I'm prepared to fight. Everybody knows I was coming out here to fight. Like, I ain't scared. It is what it is, man. Win, lose, or draw. We, it's just a fight. What's the worst that can happen is I lose. Cool guard comes through that evening. Dude, you know, pulls him over. Hey, man, what's up with my cellmate? Why y'all locking my cellmate up? And the guard tells him. And this dude's got just the biggest mouth in the pod. He tells him. They went under investigation and the fourth dude went for a knife they found in the cell. The, the white dude they locked up, Danny. At the time, in order for you to check in, you had to tell something. If you didn't have some information to get you, to give the guards, the guards would, I've seen them coming in and be like, hey, he's trying to check in. Whoever he owes money, you better get on his ass because he's trying to go to hole on you. Danny told him, told him who the three people were that he owed money. They went back that day, listened through Danny's phone calls. Danny had talked to his people on the phone and asked them to, hey, can you send this person some money? I need you to send 150 here. And his people told him, no, no, we're not going to. That's when Danny decided to check in. Dude tells everybody, hey, man, I talked to the guard, man. The dude Danny didn't just check in, man. He threw everybody under the bus. I told everybody after that, if Danny comes back out, if he comes back on the yard, if he comes back in the population and I see Danny, I'm smashing Danny on sight. Danny's not only checked in, Danny just snitched on a bunch of dudes and I've associated myself with him. He's made me look bad. I still got many years to do and I can't be tied to no rat. I can't be tied to no dude that's scared, that's running from people, pulling check-in moves. If Danny comes back out on the yard, I'm gonna beat the shit out of Danny. He's not my homeboy no more. I don't rock with him. Everybody in there that did deal with Danny has now disowned him. I never saw Danny incarcerated again. Danny went on to, I don't know if he went to another prison, if he went to the other side of the yard, he went to another part of the compound or what happened. But the next time I would see Danny would be on the news. And Danny's picture was taken alongside three other guys that had planned on robbing this jewelry store to get money to buy guns. 
that they were then going to take to, and this is crazy, you can Google it, everything will pop up. They were going to take the money that they got from this jewelry heist, buy these guns, shoot up this church, and try to start a race war. Danny went from being a cool white dude that I kicked it with every single day to being a coward, to put me in a messed up position, to becoming a snitch, only to go on and go to wherever he went to join some type of white racist gang, get released from prison, link up with some of their people, and plotted to shoot up a church to try to spark off some type of race war. You can't make this shit up, man. Huh? Fucking Danny. Now, there's no pride with going to prison. To say that you that's a prideful act or anything like that, unless you were doing it in the name of love or defending somebody in your family, there's no pride. Going to prison is stupid. It means, A, somebody told on you, B, you got caught by the police, or C, you're just a reckless idiot did something sporadically, you're not good at being a criminal, it means you got your dumb ass locked up. One thing I do take pride in is the way I carried myself while incarcerated. I always held my head high. I didn't walk around with my chest poked out, but when the time came, I would poke my chest out. I never ran from a fight. I can say that with the utmost confidence. I put that on my children. I never ran from a fight. I never ran from a beef. I always faced it head on and that I do take pride in because in an environment like that when you're locked up with society's worst guys that don't give a shit and that's why they're there to begin with you're going to run across a bunch of different situations during your time incarcerated where you're going to be tested your name is going to mean everything anybody that's ever done time with me will tell you my name was solid in the prison not for being the biggest and baddest and craziest and most go hard dude in there but for just being a solid individual all around. If I said something to you, you could take it to the bank. It was the truth. If we did business together, on my end, I always held up to my end. And I was always good at what I did. I always was a man. I never told on nobody. After that Danny situation, I was very cautious on who I let get close to me. People are just like chameleons. You can take a suburb white dude and drop him into a jail that's predominantly black. And I've seen it happen. It's called adapting and adjusting. You can take a, a just a, a little suburban white guy, pick him up, drop him in a predominantly black jail. And the way he talks, the way he walks, the way he moves will change instantly. This isn't a progression. This is something that happens immediately because he's got to adapt. He don't want to look like the outsider. That's what Danny was. He was a guy that was from the suburbs that got dropped into this environment that had to recreate himself so that he could survive. But then when it came time to really show people that he was this person that he was pretending to be, not only did he run to the guards for help, not only did he snitch on the guys that he, that he owed money to, dudes that I got super close with, dudes I became cool with. After this whole situation, man, these dudes spent many years around each other. My name was was good in there. Danny's, not so much. Not only did he tell on them, but he went on to join a racist organization. And I guess he did that because he needed the protection. When in reality, at the time, the white dudes that were in them racist gangs, they weren't running nothing. They were by far the weakest gang in the entire prison. And I never really seen them fight anybody but each other. And so in me telling you the last story, you should now understand why a lot of the politics are the way they are and why you hang out with the people you hang out with and you don't hang out with the people you don't hang out with. Being gay in prison wasn't very common when I first started doing time. But after year after year after year, as it became more acceptable and in society, it started to strive in the penitentiary. Guys that were afraid to come out the closet were coming out left and right because there were so many openly gay men incarcerated. For me, on this go-round, and this was on the trip that sent me away, it was new to me. I didn't know any gay guys in the street. 
I didn't know any guys that were undercover. I didn't know anybody that was bisexual. All the dudes I knew in the streets were street dudes. Like they all messed with females. My own boy X. And X was a... X looked like a damn He-Man action figure. X is a black dude, maybe 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 that just has those genetics that he could never lift a weight in his life and he's already big and just cut up and looks like somebody out of a movie. X is in there on a robbery charge. X tells me all about his robbery, what happened, the sawed-off shotgun incident and all this. X is another dude I get close to. This is after the whole Danny incident. Same ordeal. It's easy to be tricked. When I'm telling you, you really never know who someone is. The person you initially meet, over a period of time, you're going to find out different things about them. And that's usually not who they are. Same routine. We meal up together. Watch TV. Pull-ups and push-ups. Share the phone time. My dude. All it takes to find out who somebody is or what they're into is to introduce that into their setting. If somebody's an undercover drug addict and you don't know anything about it, you're going to find out once drugs come around because they're going to start getting high. If someone, say like Danny, is scared to fight, you're going to find out that they're scared to fight when it's time to fight. When the fight gets introduced... They're going to back out and run away. X wasn't none of that. We get a boy. A boy being an openly gay man. That plays the female role in the relationship. They bring this boy in. Put him on the top tier. We all see him when he comes in with his stuff. Quiet. Don't speak to nobody. Staring at the ground. Not trying to make no eye contact. They put him on the top tier in the cell. Sitting out there with X bullshitting like we would always do. And as X is talking to me, I see him keep cutting his eyes over. Keeps cutting his eyes. I look over and I'm like, yeah, man, here we go. This is going to bring out all the guys that are gay. The guys that pretend not to be gay or like they're not cool with that. This is 100% going to bring them to the surface. Because now it's like fresh meat in the pod and the guys that want that. Have now got to step out there and go after it. Or somebody else is going to take it. Don't take long. Homeboy X comes to my cell. He says, Jay, what's up with you? I said, what's up, man? He's like, man, they messed up my commissary order. There's some things I ain't get. Think you look out? I said, yeah, X, I got you, whatever. X tricked the shit out of me. I would met X's mom in the visiting room. Like, you know, he told her, hey, this is Jay. He's headed off to prison. We'll probably be ending up. Hey, how you doing? How you doing, miss? Hey, how you doing, Jay? I met his mom. Like, X is my dude. Can I borrow this, borrow that? He went to bars. These, we used to get these pouches of Tang, the orange soda stuff. Borrowed that, borrowed some other items. Bunch of different things. Maybe add it up to about $10. No big deal. He's my homeboy. He's good for it. I watch him. He goes up to his cell. Now, he doesn't live far down from where they just put this boy. I pay attention to him for a minute. He goes in his cell, and I go back to what I'm doing. And then something tells me, look up. I look up, and he walks by the boy's cell, and the doors are about this far off the ground, and they slide. Actually, these doors swung, but they're about this far off the ground. You can slide an entire honey bun underneath the door. I see him walk by the boy's cell, and he kind of glances around to see if anybody's looking at him, and he slides all the stuff I just gave him into the boy's cell, into the punk cell. Punk, sissy, gunk, all names that they call gay guys, right? When I see it, I go, hmm. Shit. There is no reason that my homeboy should have just went and blessed the gay guy unless, come on now, he's gay. Act like I didn't see nothing. He comes back a short time later. He's trying to talk to me and I'm not really for conversation now. And it's not that I have anything against gay people. It's just that you associate yourself with people that do the same things as you. And if you're associating yourself with people that do things that you don't do, people automatically assume that's what you do. So now I can't rock with X because X has just slid the stuff on these dudes door in front of everybody. He's trying to feed the boy, right? I start trying to avoid X, not really talking to him. And it comes to a point where I have to tell him, look, man, 
I seen you put the stuff underneath the boy's door. Yeah, okay, so what's wrong with that? I'm like, bro, you gay? Yeah, I'm gay. Why didn't you ever tell me you were gay? I mean, I didn't think I had to tell you all that. Like, yeah, I messed with the boys. I'm like, X, man, you know we can't kick it, dog. We can't be homeboys. Everybody's going to think that I'm gay. Man, Jay, I messed with the boys on the streets. This is my second bid. Like, you're going to learn. Like, I started messing with the boys in my first go round. X, I'm not going to learn because I'm not gay. Like, you know what I mean? I'm not going to wake up tomorrow and just be gay. I'm not gay. All right, so you cut me off because I messed with the boy. I said, bro, I, I can't fuck with you, man. I can't fuck with you. Like, you know what I mean? Got to fall back, fall back mode in full effect. I fall back from X. It goes from me falling back from X to X and the boy being together all the time. The boy is now his boy. He is... X is the boy's man. You know what I mean? They, they walk around together. They make food together. They sit and watch TV together. Like, they're a couple. And that's what they do. We get sent off to prison. A little bit of time goes by, man. This is way after the whole Danny incident. And we all, we're constantly getting new guys on the yard. The yard's getting moved around. Guys are getting transferred from here and there. And I hear a bunch of dudes, like the gay guys, at the other end of the fence. And it's a big-ass weight pile with a lot of weights. Like, they're stretched out on this long concrete slab. And I hear the boys going, go, X, go, X, like cheerleaders, right? And I'm like, no way. No way. And I look down there, and X is laying on the bench with a cigarette hanging out of his mouth, bench pressing the 315. Ugh, big old boy, man. Bench pressing the 315. And there's like four or five boys standing at the fence cheering him on. I know a lot of people going to say you shouldn't have fell back from dude because he was gay. You can't say that if you haven't been locked up because you don't understand how things run. What you may accept in the streets you can't do in there because you are judged by the company you keep. If dude, like with Danny's situation, if that guard hadn't have told them dudes, you know, told dude sell me about what Danny had done it would have been all eyes on me like I had done something Danny also by telling on them he eliminated his problem and the problem I had which my problem would have been eliminated after we fought because once we fight that's dead if we have to fight again that's dead with the X situation even though I liked X on a personal level he was a straight street dude straight savage in these streets somebody I kicked away and got along with he tricked me he knew damn well that, and us kicking it, somewhere in the conversation should have came up, hey, I like men. Because once I find this out, now I'm sitting there looking at X like, this dude been plotting on me? Like, big ass dude, man. Now let me find out he thinks I'm cute. Watch the people you kick it with, man. Don't be afraid to cut people off. When that moment comes that you realize somebody's not who you thought they were, back away from them. I should have backed away from Danny when I started suspecting Danny was getting high. I gave him the benefit of the doubt, thought I could trust him, and said, all right, he just said he smoked some weed with a cellmate. When I knew what I saw, I know I seen that man nodding off. But me, being Jimmy Neutron, the old Sammy Sausage Head, the green bean, thinking I know everything because I done did all this time, thinking I can trust this dude, it almost got me putting a really, really bad situation with X it wouldn't have put me in a bad situation it would have just put a label on me that didn't belong to me like I said watch the company you keep hope y'all enjoyed today's video glad I was able to make it through the video I don't know if you can tell I'm tired maybe an hour and a half two hours of sleep last night I'm telling you man I, I swear to God feels like there's an electric panel buzzing in my mouth so I've had no sleep Stop real quick to make the video on the way to the next job. Got to hit DMV today. I love all y'all. Thank y'all for everybody that checked in with last night's live. Um, laptop died when the live first started, so I had to restart. If you haven't checked the merch out, make sure you go check out the merchandise. You can go to my channel, go over to the store, click on Springs, Teesprings, go right in, and just tons to choose from. I love all y'all. Glad to be back, and I'll be glad when this... And the situation right here is resolved. But anyways, these jails, detention centers, these prisons, these facilities, they're all just 
crazier worlds inside of this already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. Just trying to keep y'all entertained. Oh, you're not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams, Let's Live Life. It's all my real ones and the awesome real ones watching. Because y'all still watching me. And y'all know how we do. Salute.